In today's trip report, a ride on Transport for Wales is soon to be gone. Class 170 diesel trains up the Ebu Valley Railway to Ebu Vale from Cardiff Central. We'll compare the train and the scenery and the cost. We'll rate it all. This is The Rateway. Hello and welcome to Cardiff Central. Right in the heart of Wales is bustling capital city. This is the hub for all Transport for Wales trains and also an important calling point for Great Western Railway and cross-country trains. And it's where I'm going to be starting my journey today as I travel up the Ebu Vale Railway to Ebu Vale Town. This is the main ticket hall and it's also the way that we're going to access our train today with Cardiff Central's secret platform. That's right, unlike the rest of the platforms by which the entrance is through the main concourse and past the ticket barriers, Platform Zero is hidden to the side of the station behind m and Simply Food and you have to go up this rather exciting, okay, not very exciting, but it's different, I guess, staircase to get there. That's, that's it, basically. Turn right and you're here. Welcome to Platform Zero. If this train looks familiar to you, that's because it probably is. This is a Class 170 and they operate in several locations around the United Kingdom. These trains will actually be leaving Transport for Wales very soon, so all the more important that I ride one today. Upon boarding, the first thing I notice is that the train is really rather busy, but I find more seats towards the rear of the train. This one will do fine for today's journey. The seats are really rather comfortable and they're equipped with armrests as well, which is an added bonus considering this is a commuter route. There's a table to do work from and there's plug sockets located on the train and smaller seat back tables for those who don't have a full size table. The passenger information screens are actually working for a change. You would not believe how many times I get on board a train these days and they're not working. So that's a good thing. But now a bad thing, and that's there's no window side armrest. So if you're sat in a window seat, you only have this ledge to lean your arm on. On closer look, that window's kind of grubby, do you not think? Not long after I've boarded and settled into my seat, the train departs ready to travel to Ebu Vale and it's departing on time, which is a good start. Also, when pulling out of the station, I noticed for a diesel train, the engines are really rather quiet and the ride seems rather smooth. We'll have to see if those factors stay the same as the journey progresses. The train we're passing here is a rather interesting one. It's a class 769 bi-mode train that can switch interchangeably between diesel and electric power. It was converted from a 319 electric train that dates back from the 80s that used to work on Thameslink services in London. I can tell you from experience they're not the most reliable. This train, however, seems very reliable and we're up to speed at no time at all. For the first few miles after leaving Cardiff Central, this train spends a short section of time alongside the main line and it's not unusual to pass by a train going to London. Freight enthusiasts may find this of interest, the Cardiff Freightliner Terminal, although as you can see this fence rather obstructs the view. However, I was sort of lucky and spotted a Tesco train. Every little helps, I suppose. That's what they say, isn't it? I'm not very interested in freight trains, but for those who are, this route is pretty exciting because we're about to pass another freight depot, that's DB Schenker's depot, and this is the point where the Ebu Vale branch line leaves the main line. So it's time to say goodbye to quadruple tracks and overhead wires and express trains all the way to London, and time for just, well, a raw single track. It's going to be single track for most of the journey anyway, although there will be some passing loops. Do you prefer the busy flash express lines or do you like the more rural countryside lines? Let me know in the comments because this is something really subjective and I think a lot of people have very different opinions on this. This rather overgrown single track that you can see here is the branch line from Newport. It was decided that Ebuvale has enough demand to also warrant a service to Newport but the constraints of the single track mean it's currently curtailed at Cross Keys. So a Cross Keys Newport shuttle runs, when there's enough staff to run it, that is. This service is notorious for being cancelled due to a not enough train crew. The first station that we'll call at is Pie Corner, and this is the newest station on the route, having only opened a few years ago. In fact, while I'm no history expert, I can tell you the entire route is fairly new. It only opened 10 years ago, or should I say reopened. There was formerly an Ebu Valley Railway, but it was closed in the mid 20th century and recently reopened as more housing estates boom. 
OK, so it's not the most attractive of stations. In fact, it's rather drab and boring, but it's functional and it serves what it was built for. It was built to serve the local communities and housing estates in the area. I'm hoping the scenery will improve slightly as the journey progresses, but I must be reasonable with my expectations. This isn't a scenic route. This is a commuter route at the end of the day. I mean, this proves my point. Everywhere I look, there's a lot of trees. And the other side, trees. Yeah, I'm, I'm sort of disappointed with the scenery so far, but we are only 15, 20 minutes into the journey. We've still got a good 40 minutes to go. The next station is Rogerstone, and it's a really rather pleasant station. You can see the local villages here, which look very pretty with nice attractive houses. And there's a nice view of the Welsh valleys in the background. Yes, overall, it's a rather nice station and it's a lot nicer than Pie Corner, not going to lie. The scenery is picking up a little bit. OK, so it's not the Swiss mountains, but it's some very pretty Welsh villages. Oh, and another train. I spy a pub out the corner of my right eye, but unfortunately, I can't hop out here at Riska and Ponty Mista for a vodka and lemonade as I'm continuing to Ebu Vale. Riska and Ponty Mister, here it is, and it looks like it's another station built to serve a housing estate. But on the other side, it's really rather pretty, actually, these views of the Welsh Valleys. And the scenery really does pick up as we leave Risker and Pontimista and head towards Cross Keys. The sun is shining over Cross Keys and there is not a cloud in the sky. I cannot tell you how lucky I've been with the weather today. And the train has air conditioning, so I'm not too hot. What could be better than that? I'm in a good mood. Welcome to Cross Keys. As we pace out of Cross Keys and venture on towards Ebu Vale, we turn some sharp corners and it's a return of the trees. The scenery seems to have gone. So let's take a look at the rest of the train. Something you may have noticed is that these trains have coat hooks and they have numbered seats. You might wonder why a train which works only hour or two hour max journeys has these things. Well, these used to run for Anglia Railways and they used to do long distance services between Norwich in Norfolk all the way down to Basingstoke in Hampshire. So these trains are X long distance trains and under other companies, these class 170s do continue to do long distance work. Oh, this is Newbridge, by the way. It's fairly unremarkable. So I'll just get back to looking at the train. You can't go wrong with a decent sized luggage rack and there's some perch seats just for when all the regular seats are taken so you don't have to stand. There's a decent sized toilet here. And if you require wheelchair accessible facilities, don't worry because this train is also equipped with those. Llanhilleth is the final stop before we reach the two stations in Ebu Vale, and I'm not a big fan, to be honest. There's not much here. It's, again, another residential town. I'm noticing a pattern here. But as I said, it's a commuter line, so, you know, I can't really have that many unreasonable expectations. This isn't the Glacier Express. Well, this is rather nice, isn't it? Curtains, big fat armrests, big fat seats that recline. This must be first class. Wrong, it used to be first class. It's declassified and you can find it at one end of the train. A lot of people don't realize you can travel in there with a standard class ticket and therefore don't sit there, meaning it's often a lot quieter and obviously a lot more comfortable. So maybe try sitting there next time you travel. Ebu Vale Parkway was the penultimate stop, a really uninspiring little station surrounded by bushes and I couldn't really get a clear view so I'm sorry I haven't got a video of that. But I have got a video of Ebu Vale Town and this is where our journey ends. I actually really enjoyed this journey, the scenery wasn't great, I give it a 6 out of 10 but the train itself in terms of ride quality, sound quality, comfort was Brilliant, to be honest. I think I could have sat in it for much longer without being uncomfortable. So that gets an 8 out of 10. If you're interested to know the price, it's actually really good value. It's £7.90 from not just Cardiff Central, but any other station within the Valley Zone. I paid £5.20 because I used a rail card. Well, that's pretty much it from me for now. I hope you enjoyed the video of this journey to Ebu Vale. The railway is still rather new, so if you wouldn't mind liking and subscribing if you enjoyed, it'd be appreciated. See you soon. Thanks for watching The Rateway today. We hope you have a pleasant rest of the day. Goodbye.